Chances are you or someone you love has jumped on the essential oils bandwagon. That is true. KY3's Paula Morehouse has more on this increasingly popular health craze. Paula. And essential oils are touted as a natural way to cure a number of ailments. But do these oils truly help or is this all just hype? The substance inside these tiny bottles have healing powers. That's the belief of essential oil users, users like Haley Fender. Rub it right where it hurts. Haley rubs them on, swallows some, and diffuses others in the air. She turned to oils about five years after she was thrown from a car in a horrible accident. Broken neck, both my lungs were collapsed, my back, my whole leg, compound fractures, lungs collapsed, everything. I mean... I was fighting for my life when I woke up. Underneath all the scars are plates and screws from her ankles all the way up to her neck. Haley uses frankincense for pain. Put a little peppermint in there. Peppermint for nausea and joy for anxiety. I feel immensely better since I've been using oils. More and more people like Haley are turning to essential oils, hoping to find relief for just about any ailment. ADHD, arthritis, migraines, and even varicose veins. While they're all the rage, there's nothing new age about essential oils. They're derived from plants, trees, leaves, and resins. Their medicinal use dates back thousands of years. What was one of the gifts that was brought to the Christ child? Frankincense, myrrh. Certified holistic health coach Ren Wilson cautions, though, not all oils are created equal. Who's marketing you something, a pretty looking product, and who's really has an understanding of the growth of that plant, the soil that it's grown in, the way it's harvested, the way it's distilled, the way it's treated in the manufacturing process. A good place to start is to make sure the oils are 100% natural. Synthetic ones, Ren warns, can actually be dangerous. And many of them need a carrier oil like these to make sure they're safe for your skin. And keep in mind, not all oils can be ingested. That's why it's so important to do your homework. And there are countless guides available to help. Advocates are sold on the benefits, but do they really work? While conventional medicine is tested, studied, and its efficacy usually proven, Dr. Lance Luria says that doesn't mean there isn't a place for alternative methods, including essential oils. It's not a stretch to say, well, maybe these plants have value. Their potential for harm is minimal, and there's enough anecdotal or some studies that indicate a potential benefit. Why wouldn't you try it? The decision to try it is one Haley will never look back on. This is my way to go. Though she admits she will always be on some prescribed medications because the wreck she was in left her with serious lifelong injuries. Still, she believes she reaps enough benefits from her essential oils, she'll keep using them every day. I have to say it's a real effect because I've seen the changes in me. And while some say you should never ingest oils, other people will put a drop of lemon or peppermint oil in their water or tea to drink. So be sure to check with your doctor if you have any concerns. Now the cost. I know everybody wants to know about the cost of these. The cost of essential oils range anywhere from a few dollars for a bottle to more than $150 wow. a bottle. Yeah. But most are in the $20 to $30 range. Much of that price, though, Lisa and Ethan, depends on um, the brand and the type of oil. Okay. So, so it's and who you're ordering all, them from. It is. Okay. So Chances are these days you or someone you know uses essential oils. Now more people are putting them on pets. Hmm. But are they safe for animals? KY3's Paula Morehouse has a closer look. <laughs> Feisty and funny, these energetic fur balls are, for many, part of the family. She's my baby. <laughs> Just like a loved one, pets get a lot of TLC. And when it comes to care, Kelly Messerly only wants the best for her border collie mix named Sue. So we went for looking for a natural flea repellent. Messerly turned to essential oils, which contain concentrated properties derived from plants, trees, leaves, and resin. And I just spray her down. She says a rosemary and purification blend keep fleas away, and frankincense eases arthritis pain. I just put a drop right here. 
and then I just rub it in right there. Like Messerly, Terry Cazell also believes in using these substances on her service dog, Tandy. When I'm having my panic attacks and I'm all anxious, that makes her kind of anxious because she's trying to help me. And so when I'm over it, then I kind of rub us both down <laughs> with those ser with serenity and lavender. The women are part of a growing trend of people using essential oils on their pets. There are even classes on the topic, like this one in Springfield. The medicinal use for these potent oils dates back thousands of years and have been touted to ease a number of ailments in people. But are they safe for our pets? Well, the answer isn't that simple. There are some really beneficial things that we get out of, out of natural products, but to think that they, there are no toxic natural products is a is a mistake. Dr. Tim Evans is head of toxicology at the University of Missouri's veterinary diagnostic lab where they can examine animals and perform tests to determine if they were killed by poisons. The nature of his job makes him cautious. No one ever calls me on the phone and says hey my dog's looking great today. I only get the phone calls that things are dead or dying. Dr. Evans warned certain oils pose a threat to pets. Particularly a concern certainly uh, pennyroyal, wormwood, bitter almond, tea tree, melaleuca in high concentrations, even if put on superficially, can cause um, depression in ataxia. And in worst case scenarios, even death. A Springfield veterinarian told us a client's cat died from tea tree oil. And these oils must be used carefully. Dose makes the poison. He says smaller pets are extremely susceptible to poisoning, so it's critical to follow the label's directions. <coughs> Cats are even more vulnerable. <coughs> so essential oil used for felines is very limited. Because they don't have a particular pathway for the safe excretion of those products. The product should come from a reputable manufacturer with full disclosure of the ingredients. Before applying any, clear it with a vet. Messerly and Kazell have done their homework. They're careful about what kind of oil they use. There are oils out there that I would never put on my dog. And they're mindful of the liquid's power. One drop of peppermint is equal to 28 cups of herbal peppermint tea. While they say oils have been nothing but beneficial for their dog's health. She loves it. They advise others to do the research too. After all, the point is to keep these four-legged fur balls in the family for a long time. Now, two biggest takeaways from Dr. Evans, consult your vet and read and follow those directions. That's critical. There's more information about pets and essential oils on the ASPCA's website. And I'll have a link to that site on this story at KY3.com.